What's up, Flick Connection? This is Darren, and I've got Andrew Ladner in the studio with me today. Hello. Um, Andrew has been a guitar tech for years. Um, he's been traveling with a lot of big acts. And so today, while I've got him, I want to talk about what are some of the best movies uh, about music. And uh, we've leaving this a little bit open-ended, mm -hmm. but I do think we kind of want to talk about musicians. Um, so we are kind of excluding, uh, not on purpose, but... It does sort of exclude musicals for the most part, even though it could include a couple. Uh, but we really want to talk about um, some of the best movies that, that are focused on musicians, fictional or nonfiction. Yeah. So it is fairly open-ended. I'll let um, you start this off. Yeah, so um, my top one, I, I think, has to be uh, This is Spinal Tap mm. um, for, a, for quite a few reasons. I know for a fact it's the one that I've seen the most. In, you can probably attest to this more than me. But it really does have, ring a lot of truth, as silly as it is. It does. You get lost in venues. Things don't <laughs> yeah. happen. This and that. Uh, you know, there's other musicians that you read about that go, were they just following us? The, the guys from Alice Cooper's band had an uh, event where they all had herpes on their lips. Oh, God. <laughs> and mind you, this is 73, 74, way before the movie, and they walked, like, were they there? Like, yeah. I mean, there are so many truths that are a little more inflated. Uh, Christopher Guest knew where he was getting his information from, you know? Yeah, well, and also, like, the, not only did Christopher Guest go on to do a whole bunch of really good mockumentaries, but it really opened up that genre. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily the first one, but it's it's like the mockumentary. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like this could be a real band, and I don't know if you know this, but those shows they build them, not telling people that. Oh no, I did not movie. know that. So they book these like college yeah. arenas as Spinal Tap. And so they did like five shows, and they made five Stone Hinges. Oh. <laughs> so in somewhere, I think it's in Minneapolis. Somebody has one of them oh, yeah. in their bar because he was. So at the college, working there and talking to, he kind of found out that it was, a, you know, a movie being shot. And he said, "I'm gonna open a bar one day. Can I have that?" And they gave him the stone. Yeah. So he has it in his. Oh bar wow, that's from cool. the movie. Well, what what what's another one that would be at the top of your list? The Wall. Yeah. Has always been one of my favorites. And I understand that you could put it in that musical sense, but yet there is a plot line, and Bob Geldof does a really great job of dictating this rock star that is going through isolation, that when you're touring is a real side effect. You're, you're just, you're away, you're in your little bubble, and how that can make you go a bit insane. You yeah. Know? So I think that's a really uh, deep and, you know, insight to the life of rock and music and yeah. all that is the isolation to where spinal taps this silly goofy, yeah yeah the, the yeah those are on stuff. different ends of the spectrum for sure exactly and to where this is like the things that you know are the downfall so here's the funny stuff and then here's like the reality of what can happen out on the road i also like blues brothers How much for the little girl? The women. How much for the women? What? Your women. I, I, I want to buy your women, the little girl, your daughters. Sell them to me. Sell me your children. Mater D. Mater D. And there's so much music that's featured in that movie, too. Exactly. It's not just like it's these, you know, SNL characters running around the country, which it is kind of a road movie, too. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Aretha Franklin's in it. Uh, Ray Charles is in it. Um, in yeah, um, it, it's it's a really good music movie. I wouldn't necessarily consider it a musical, even though the Aretha Franklin bit really plays out like a musical. Yeah, um, but the and movie the Ray Charles bit. Yeah, the movie as it's I guess it's considered a musical, but the movie as a whole to me doesn't pace out like a musical where it's no. got a musical number every so every few minutes like a musical might have right um you know and then they kind of abandon it until the very end so it's got, it's got an interesting format but you know i remember watching it when i was a kid and uh it's it's funny it's it's a good watch obviously it's a classic but i'm um, going back and watching like the opening scene when uh they're letting him out of prison mm -hmm. is so well shot 
Yep. It's it looks like a serious prison movie, and then you get into, you know, the stuff they're giving him back in the envelope, and him le- standing at that line mm-hmm. and leaning over to sign in, you know, to sign out. Yep. Um, you know, the the whole movie is from from beginning to end is just really really good and funny. So that that's definitely top of my list, but um kind of with what you were saying about the wall. Mm-hmm. Um a recent one for me was uh Whiplash. Um obviously it's not about a band, but I thought that was a really good look at a musician mm-hmm. and sort of um not just the struggle of becoming a musician, but just how much goes into developing that craft mm-hmm. and just how physically and emotionally painful yeah. it could be. Um, I think that's something that maybe a lot of artists identify with one way or another, but I thought that was a, I liked how dark Whiplash got. And for that, I, I thought that was, uh, it gets a lot of points for that. And then I, the, the end of that movie is one of my favorites. It's probably out of, out of any movie I could come up with, you know, that that's about music or a musician, I would say Whiplash probably has the best ending. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we'll stay spoiler free on this one, but, um, that one, every time I've seen it, it, mm-hmm. it still, I just it, it can't believe how good it was. Cause I thought it was going to end a little sooner than it did right. and didn't expect it to go the way that it did. And yeah. just thought that was so well crafted. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned one to me, um, Mark Wahlberg. Oh, rock star. Yeah. See, that's that bad that I just totally yeah. spaced on it. But yeah, rock star is just so over the top. And I'm sure there's a lot of truth. There is a lot of truth based in it. I've seen it a couple times. Just yeah, where, I've seen it where? once all the way through, but then <laughs> when it's on TV so much, oh, okay, you, you kind okay. Of, I was gonna say, why have you seen it so many yeah, times? Well, you, um, you start adding the fractions up, you can actually get into a couple holes. What I would rather watch, and I'd really re- rather watch this. I I wish it was a real thing. Is a feature length version of the story in Boogie Nights where Mark Wahlberg. And John C. Riley decide they're gonna make an album, oh, and they're <laughs> they're in the recording studio. They're in like jumpsuits. They're definitely they're like coked out. Yeah, you know, getting in fights because then they don't have enough money to be like. There's that scene where Mark Wahlberg's getting in an argument with the guy that recorded that their album because uh-huh. they can't pay him. He's like he he says something like. Um, we have to start selling the CD. We have to start selling the tapes in order to be able to pay you back. You give us the tapes. We get the record contract. We'll come back and give you your fucking money. Have you heard the tapes? Have you even heard them? We're guaranteed a record deal. Our stuff is that good. Man, that would be brilliant if they took that existing footage and where they're younger uh-huh. and they went back and filmed them today almost like a documentary style like reminiscing and they cut it yeah. together. I think you could put together because that's probably five minutes of the film you get another five, ten minutes of them, the interviews with them as yeah. those characters, and you could do a really funny uh, short with that. That would be so interesting for somebody to do. We need to find out how to make that happen. Yeah. Some, so we, yeah, we uh, maybe we'll start a. Uh, let us know in the comments if we should start a Kickstarter campaign to to uh, fund that project. One more, and it's one that you and I disagree on. Oh, right, yes. Um, almost Famous. Yes. So, well, before we get into this, <clears throat> I know that I'm in the minority, and that's a very beloved movie. I've got some reasons why I don't like it, mm-hmm. but we're going to get into that. I just want to make it known. I'm aware I'm in the minority <laughs> on this one. <laughs> yes. Uh, after discussing it further with you, you didn't know the full right. background on it that would have put you off. Which is that it's loosely based off Cameron Crowe, the director, and I believe he wrote it. Yeah, he he wrote and directed it. Wrote and directed. But I didn't realize that's really like based that off he his did life. that. Yeah, I didn't know that he did that when he was younger, and that is part of the reason I didn't like it. Is I liked all the stuff with the band, mm-hmm. but I didn't like the fact that I'm watching it through the lens of this young kid who I thought was poorly cast. By mm-hmm. the way, there's a scene where he's. Um, like yelling and screaming and it just I, I don't know how that kid got got put into that movie i am the enemy they easily could have found somebody yeah. to to fit that role 
But I felt like it was a lot more about it was a lot more of a coming of age mm -hmm. thing for him in this environment, whereas I was more interested in you know the the backstage scenes I think are the best part of that movie, and I really like him. I really like Jason Lee's performance. Mm -hmm. um, he was a really cool character in that. Um, and then, like I mentioned to you, for some reason, Billy Crudup, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, um, but he's the guitar player in that movie. Mm -hmm. Every movie he's in seems to be not necessarily a flop, but it seems to be less than, and I don't, I don't attribute that to him. I don't yeah. know what it is, if he's got like a curse or something, but maybe. I believe, and I'm sure you'll get many a comment to on, but that it's loosely based off Peter Frampton. Okay. And his band that he was in humble pie and then he was sort of thinking about leaving and doing this type thing because they were always kind of the opening act they were never they made it right. never made it to the, like a zeppelin level at that time but i do like I, I liked it from day one yeah uh i thought it was cool i think a lot of the details are great like the outfits yeah but that um i think like zoe deschanel his character is yeah. actually really, really great in it. Kate Hudson's character annoys me a bit. She's a big part of it too. She's a big. She's part a very of it. important part of the story. Yeah, it's kind of based, like you said, coming of age, and this yeah. is part of it. Not that it, it's I have any objections deeply. It's just sometimes it gets a little bit much. Uh, but I reflect that more on Cameron Crowe's aspect of making music and touring and bands like this happy. He he really does spin the positive yeah on it. well in that movie was also more about that era where rock and roll really was doing that it wasn't so much about yeah. the the band because there was the rolling stone aspect mm -hmm. and and it was more about like we got to get this story because the story was important because rock and roll was so important so there was the kind of micro and macro i i do think it's a a good movie um obviously like cameron crowe built a huge career off of that and then he sort of fell off but um, it's got a great soundtrack. It's got a great soundtrack. The stuff with the band's great. Um, I just kind of feel like that plane should have crashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately for Leonard Skinner, it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm guessing that's what they. No, did that's all I could think of. about. That's uh, yeah, exactly. That's all I could think about when that when the plane was looking like it was going to go down. Yeah. Is I'm thinking about Leonard Skinner, and that story so much more like. The, the, almost famous to me was less than the sum of its parts mm -hmm. and i always um a movie gets big strikes for me on that because mm -hmm. it should be more than it should yep. come together all those parts should work together and i feel like it it had some parts that were missing and you can't really fault it i mean it's a, it's a young director working on it i also suffer from that thing where uh i've heard it's really good for so long people talk about it and then it doesn't meet those expectations and it gets kind of it gets it gets some strikes for that as well well what did you think of our list um if we you feel like we left anything really important out which i'm sure we probably did for some of you leave a comment below um if you like this discussion and you want to see more like it click the like button and let us know what you'd like to see us talk about next if you haven't subscribed yet i'd invite you to do so i've got new content coming out every week but for now i'm darren and this is andrew and we're both out